Hey, what's up everyone? If you've been a loyal subscriber, you know one of my major goals for 2022 was to do a lot more reading. And fortunately, that is exactly what I did. My goal for 2022 was to read 40 books and I was able to surpass that just barely and reach 42 books in total. Now, when I say read, I should say consume. This includes both books that I have read in traditional reading formats as well as audiobooks. Surprisingly, along the spectrum of audio to traditional books, I still read a, a very good amount of traditional books, probably still way more than I ever have before, other than probably in kindergarten, elementary school, when you would read and take those RC tests, and it was a major competition. I'm very proud that I was able to reach this goal, and I think it was so powerful and really had so many benefits to my life. So in today's video, I kind of want to share how I was able to do that, and also provide a few tips for you if you want to do the same. So with that said, let's get into it. Okay, so I know I said I consumed both traditional as well as audiobooks, but what was the true makeup? Well, fortunately, I've kept track of every single book I read in a handy dandy spreadsheet. The spreadsheet shows me that I read 24 traditional books. So those are books that I actually had to look at with my own eyes and read, which means if you do the math really quickly in your head, 18 of those books were audiobooks. Honestly, I was pretty surprised by this just because it felt like I was getting through audiobooks pretty quickly, but like a lot of things, it kind of came in phases. There would be times that I was super into audiobooks and would be listening to them in the gym and just be really trying to finish them. A lot of the times when I read audiobooks, I'd kind of take on really big books, books that I wouldn't necessarily have enough time to commit to reading on my own. These are huge 600, 700 page books. Um, I know I read Steve Jobs as well as a book about the Sackler family, some really interesting reads, but things that I'm very grateful I listened to instead of reading because it would have taken me so long. And that's the first tip, and that is don't be afraid of audiobooks. I know I've made a lot of videos in the past about the ways I consume audiobooks. I use the apps both Libby and Simply E. Libby is offered through my public library here in Naples, Florida. Simply E is through the New York City Public Library. Both of these have a very extensive library of audiobooks, and the best part of all is that they are free. So you really don't have too much of a commitment. Um, you don't have to pay for the book, and it really allows you to just get so much information. So definitely check those out if you live in either of those areas. But if you don't, I'm sure your public library has some sort of similar app. You'll probably just have to ask. So audiobooks in general really allowed me to consume a lot of books that I learned so much from that, like I said, I wouldn't have really had the patience to get through on my own. This is great because a lot of these are books that I had wanted to read for a very long time. And I'm sure for a lot of you, you have these aspirational books and these seem so interesting and intriguing to you, but you're kind of afraid by the page count and whatnot. So audiobooks are a great way to get over this. I know I've talked about it in other videos, but it's not important that you are able to comprehend every single word that's said. I typically listen to my books at like 2.5 speed, which is probably right about the, the pace I'm speaking now, but it's not important to get every single word or every single sentence. What's important is you're picking up the main ideas, the main topics, and don't hate on that whole idea. I mean, think about it when you're reading. Are you really consuming every single word on the page? No, probably not. So don't hate on those of us who love audiobooks. The second tip I have is something I mentioned earlier, and that is to create a spreadsheet. So I created the spreadsheet right at the beginning of the year, whenever I finished my first book, and I'm really grateful I did. Again, it's a pretty simple, straightforward spreadsheet, nothing special by any means. Um, but in it, I have the book title, the author, the cover, just because it makes it look a little bit nicer, then the genre, just so I can kind of keep track of what I've been reading. And then I like to have the format again, just so I can say how many books I actually read as well as the pages or the hours it was, and then the date that I finished it on, and of course, a quick summary of the book in my own words, as well as a very short review. I think it's really great to keep track, not just of the books that you read, but also kind of your interest in them, your review of them. This has been helpful for me just because over the course of a year, 42 books is a lot, so it's, it's hard to remember all of them, and it's really nice to kind of be able to look back on this, jog your memory. But yeah, I am always going to advocate for spreadsheets. I think they make your life so much easier. And this is just on Google Sheets. I think Goodreads has a way to do this on their app. 
But honestly, by the time my girlfriend told me about it, I was like 20 books in and I really didn't feel like moving everything over. Um, but maybe I'll try that for 2023 just because I think it's a little bit more social. But that is the second tip. Definitely create a spreadsheet to keep track of the books that you're reading. Not only is it fun to look back on at the end of the year, but it's also good for your memory and getting a good snapshot of the different types of books that you're reading. The third tip is to read a lot of different books. I don't think I would have been able to get to 42 books in a year if every single book I read was about Wall Street. Now, trust me, I probably still read way more Wall Street books than any other year, but it is important to kind of give yourself a lot of new ideas and read books that you wouldn't typically consider reading. This not only makes reading more exciting or kind of throws off your, your typical uh, pace when it comes to reading, but it also introduces you to new ideas and new authors that really could change your life and you never would know if you didn't give it the chance. This year, I decided to read a lot more fiction books. I typically am not a big fiction reader, um, but I kind of treated fiction books as a good way to practice my reading comprehension skills as well as my speed. Fiction books, as you can imagine, are a little bit easier to read through. Uh, I don't feel as much pressure to consume every single word and try to remember all the facts when you're kind of just looking for the story. But on a deeper level, I really read some amazing fiction books this year that really made me reflect on my own life and, you know, were great reads. One of my favorite books this year was Anxious People. I read it when I was in France and really the story just captivated me. I know this was a somewhat popular book. They also made a absolutely terrible Netflix series, but I definitely recommend it. And, you know, that's a book that I typically would not consider reading, but because I kind of challenged myself to get outside my comfort zone, read more books than I typically would, I did it and I'm very grateful for it. So that is the next tip. Try to read a lot of different books, a lot of different content, and then from there, choose what you like and dive into it. The next tip is something that I've heard from my book, reading, productivity, all things combined, mentor, Ali Abdul. And what he talks about is kind of treating books like blog posts. For a blog post, once you read kind of what you were looking for, do you really feel obligated to finish the blog post? Probably not. You close out the tab and you move on with your life. And I think people can really do this a lot more for books than they do. I know this is something I probably need to work on for 2023. One of my issues is that I didn't do this for 2022. A lot of the times I would get 50, 100 pages into a book and really not be enjoying it. But because I kind of had that sunk cost fallacy, I said, oh, I've already committed all this time. I need to finish it. And I don't think that's the best way to do it because if you're not enjoying the reading, you're not gonna enjoy reading in general and that kind of makes it harder to build the habit. So if you're not loving what you're reading, don't make yourself finish it because at the end of the day, you're gonna get through so many more books when you're enjoying what you're reading instead of forcing yourself to read. Okay, and the final tip is something that I hear again quite a bit, and that is to find a time in your day to read. This again, is something I probably should follow a little bit better is something I'd like to incorporate more into my routine, but I would try to read at the end of my night every single day. So for me, once I'm in bed, once I've watched at least one random YouTube video to kind of turn my brain off, that's when I try to put my phone down and read until I fall asleep. Now, of course, I'm not perfect. I don't do this every night, but this really does allow you to get through a lot of books. You'd be surprised just at the total progress you can make when you read just 20 minutes a day. Again, it's one of those things that looks really minimal when you look at it from a day-to-day -day perspective, but over time it compounds and you get through tons of pages and tons of books. So as foreign as this may feel and as much FOMO as you might get as to what someone posted on Be Real, try this out, commit at least 15, 20 minutes every single day to reading uh, at the end of the day, and you really will see just amazing gains and you might read some amazing books, fall in love and be so grateful that you did it. So with that said, that's gonna wrap up the video. I know I was speaking extremely quickly in this video. Maybe I was just listening to too many audiobooks but I really hope you enjoyed it. I can't emphasize the importance of reading. It has changed my life and it has opened up so many doors and opportunities for me. Reading really is the best way to gain a lot of information. I know YouTube is amazing, that's why you're watching this, but to get really detailed, in the weeds, expertise, knowledge, that comes from reading. But if reading a whole book seems intimidating to you, then I definitely recommend reading The Morning Brew. It is the best daily business newsletter. 
I've been reading it every single day for the last five years and it too has changed my life. So if you are interested in reading them, you get all the business news from Wall Street to Silicon Valley in just five minutes. I cannot recommend it enough. So if you're interested in signing up perfectly for free, the link will be down below in the description. And as always, if you have any questions at all, you can reach out to me on Instagram right here at Galbraith. Love to help you out. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Happy New Year. Peace.